This video is sponsored by Audible. Get a free audiobook by going to audible.com slash citybeautiful. Let's talk about a thing that grows and adapts. It consumes energy and nutrients and produces waste. It distributes these resources via a circulatory system. This thing is made up of many smaller units, moving in harmony and in equilibrium. What am I talking about? Is it Tijuana or an iguana? Brussels or mussels? Dubai or a fly? Saskatoon or a raccoon? On the surface, at least, it does seem like cities and organisms have a lot in common. There's actually been a whole lot of research and writing done on this very topic. So what's the verdict? Can we consider cities to be something like organisms? And how does it help us plan future cities? I'm gonna say right up front that I'm coming to this video from somewhat of a skeptical place. I've heard people refer to cities as organisms before, and I always thought it was just kind of a bunch of coincidences and of limited value to planning. But I'm always open to challenging my own biases, and I went into the research for this video with an open mind. So with that said, let's get into it. Let's start by talking about mammals. Did you know that a mouse's heart will beat the same number of beats as an elephant's in the course of their lifetimes, and the same as a human's? Despite living for very different lifespans and being very different sizes, all mammals' hearts beat about the same amount. Biologists have found many of these scaling laws in the natural world. One of the most critical is metabolic rate. Metabolic rate is the energy expended by an organism to keep itself alive. It's typically measured in a unit of energy over a unit of body mass. For example, humans need about 2,000 calories, or 90 watts, to sustain our size. And in fact, that calorie intake recommendation changes based on how big or small you are. The ratio of size to energy is constant across all organisms, and the ratio is three-fourths. For every four orders of magnitude increase in mass, an organism's energy requirements increases by three orders of magnitude. This scaling law is pretty amazing when you think about how it applies to tiny bacteria and huge whales. Okay, so this is definitely some interesting stuff, but what does it have to do with cities? Well, the commonalities I mentioned back in the beginning of the video aren't just superficial similarities. Cities do grow and have a circulatory system, just like many organisms. Scientists and complexity theorists have noticed these commonalities as well, and have begun to look for scaling laws that can apply to cities the same way they apply to organisms. And they have found some. First, they found a basic economy of scale law. As cities grow, they become more efficient. For example, as a city grows, it needs more gas stations. But a city of 2 million does not need twice as many gas stations as a city of 1 million. It only needs about 85% more. This scaling law works for infrastructure too, like pipes, roads, and electrical lines. You can't use this law to compare cities across nations, but they work for cities within the same country. The big takeaway here is that bigger cities are more efficient and require fewer resources and materials than smaller ones. This has important implications on carbon footprints as we consider ways to combat global warming. So we know that as cities get bigger, they get more efficient at a ratio of 0.85 but they also get more efficient in a different way as they get larger too. But as a city gets bigger, things like average wages, gross domestic product, and the number of patents produced increases too, but they increase more than a simple one-to-one -one ratio. The scaling factor for these indicators is 1.15. For every one order of magnitude of population increase, the economic output of these cities goes up by 115%. The same is true with negative indicators, such as disease and crime. It's easy to think that a city like Milwaukee is very different from Green Bay, but according to these scaling laws, a Green Bay is a small Milwaukee, or Milwaukee is just an oversized Green Bay. I think these findings based in statistics do make some intuitive sense. As cities grow, they can take advantage of economies of scale, and at the same time, they become more productive places. The social networks that facilitate economic growth grow fast, faster than pure population growth. But are there ways cities are not like organisms and their scaling laws? Circulation is one example. Many organisms circulate nutrients and oxygen and carry away waste via the vascular system. The clear analog here is a city street network. Streets move goods to homes and businesses, as well as take away waste via garbage trucks and sewer systems. Streets also function something like a nervous system, with electric and telecommunications infrastructure either buried under the street or running over it on utility poles. Streets, like veins, need to reach all parts of the system. They're similar on the surface, but do they really work the same way? According to one study, not really. A mammal's circulatory system has one central node, the heart. All arteries and veins fan out from there, and the result is a hierarchical system. Streets and traffic are decentralized. 
Not all traffic goes from the periphery to the center, or vice versa. Large metro areas are polycentric metropolises. They're like an organism with multiple hearts. And even in smaller cities, lots of trips go from one part of the periphery to the other, while blood cells don't make specific trips from your nose to your fingertip without first passing through the heart. Organisms don't really have this equivalent of a grid system with multiple routes to the same destination. The miles of road may scale according to an organism-inspired scaling law, but they don't function the same way. The city as organism metaphor applies to some systems and not others. It's not perfect. Are there other metaphors that might work better? We have been comparing cities to other things for a long, long time, and they often tell us more about us than about cities. Cities as organisms wasn't always the prevailing metaphor for cities. Back in the Industrial Revolution, cities were typically compared to machines. Machines at the time were rapidly replacing work typically done by hand. Their speed, power, noise, and efficiency left an immediate impression on the rapidly growing urban population. At the same time, innovations like cars, elevators, water and sewer pipes, and electricity were rapidly turning the city into a machine itself. Cities consumed raw materials like timber, ore, and sheep, growing larger and more powerful, just like the machines. Even as modernists attempted to reform the city, they stuck with the city as machines metaphor. Efficiency was their goal. Corbu said that the city of today is dying because it is not geometrical. He even extended the machine metaphor to buildings, famously saying, a house is a machine for living in. Perhaps the best visualization of a city as machine is Fritz Lang's film Metropolis. Throughout history, cities have also been compared to communities, marketplaces, and battlegrounds, among others. But today, cities as organisms make sense to us as we now have a deeper understanding of the natural world, as well as statistics and data to better understand cities at a macroscopic level. All that said, it's hard to find detailed, actionable recommendations inside the city as organism metaphor. There are some about sustainability, sure, but these scaling laws can suggest that the destiny of a city is preordained, not something that city planners want to hear. But I want to go on record and say that there are some city as blank metaphors that can be useful to city planning. For example, did you know that cities can be considered crystals, liquids, or gases, at least in terms of their urban heat island effect? Rigidly gridded cities that resemble the atomic structure of crystals are more likely to trap heat and make the city hotter relative to rural areas while chaotically organized cities like Paris or Boston that resemble the molecular organization of gases tend to keep cooler. This kind of information, described as a metaphor, can help inform the design and layout of street grids that can help keep cities cooler. This can mean people using less energy on air conditioning, a positive change for the climate. So while I find some of the city as organism research interesting, it's probably not gonna make an impact on my work or the design of cities. But we've been comparing cities to other things for a really long time, we're probably gonna keep doing it. Cities are just so complex and fascinating that we can't help but try to understand them by using something else as a reference point. But to me, cities will always just be cities. This video was based on the book Scale by Jeffrey West. It's really a thought-provoking book and it goes into more detail than I could get into in a short YouTube video. And perhaps the best way to check it out is on Audible. You can get access for free by signing up for Audible at audible.com citybeautiful or text City Beautiful to 500, 500 If a free trial isn't enough for you to give Audible a chance, listen to this. Audible members can also get free access to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post delivered daily on the Audible app. That alone is an amazing deal. And of course, Audible offers bestsellers to your mobile device for easy listening at the gym, at home, or on mass transit. Start listening today with a 30-day Audible trial, and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com slash C-I-T-Y-B-E-A-U-T-I-F-U-L or text City Beautiful to 500-500. Signing up supports the channel and it's greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.